All right, everyone, how's everyone doing? I'm getting ready to go outside, get my walk in and walk to work. So um, I love to work at my job. I love just to work. It's kind of like my thing. It's kind of weird. I've always liked to work. I think there's a sense of accomplishment. So when I was having my kids, my husband was like, I don't want you to work. I don't want you to work. And that was really difficult for me <clears throat> to stay home. The first job I had after I had my son was at the store called the Hometown Market in Penacook, New Hampshire. And I was like, oh, I miss my son. So I ended up staying home. And um, I just did like side jobs while I stayed home until I was ready to work more. So that can be really um, tough for women who like to be out socially in work. But I did substitute that with a lot of activities outside the home and church so I was pretty busy so it all worked out but um so I'm getting ready how am I doing I'm getting ready to mail some um, stuff to the courts and some of that is an objection to my husband getting a representative with Kevin Leandro um, Leandro I think is how you say it <clears throat> don't really know the guy but I saw him unlawfully trying to sell a motorcycle on Facebook Marketplace that I had brought for my husband. My husband has been staying with him and um, you know, he actually, my husband kind of threatened me again with him saying that you're not welcome here. Um, <clears throat> you know, after asking me to come to New Hampshire, he's like, you haven't even come to New Hampshire. And I'm like, I told you that I would come to New Hampshire as soon as you want. I'll come to New Hampshire right now. I'll drop my job if you want to work this out, you know, and get over there. And he's like, you better not come to New Hampshire. You're not welcome here. Um, you know, and he's going to, you know, he'll kick you out or get you for trespassing. And you better not go to my work. And so he's really like up and down. And so, yeah, so I sent some stuff. I'm sending some stuff to the court, including what I want, which is... um alimony, child support, interference from his parents, his sister threatening to beat me up on Facebook. I still have copies of that. Um, I've kept all like tons of copies of stuff. Um, his father threatening to kick down my door. Um, on and on it goes. Um, so yeah, back child support, neglect for my car, neglect for my medical bills when I had a breast cancer scare. Luckily, I didn't have breast cancer but I still have the bills from getting the mammogram. And so, um, yeah, just um, don't be afraid to speak up for yourself. You know, the domestic abuse is going in there. Um, the, the physical assault, the verbal abuse, you know, I'm gonna kick your ass and all that stuff. That's all in there. <laughs> um, so when you have a whole family that just is so against you for no reason, just because I guess they can't have what they want in the name of grandparenting, they can't do whatever they want, they can't go get a life of their own, they can't, you know, they have to come try to kick down my door because they want to talk to their son right now. <clears throat> you know, this is all really destructive. You know, you can't say no or else, you can't... Um, you can't live your own life on your own rules. It's so destructive. So I am so glad I've come out of this family. As a Christian, you see the Christ-like love that Christ has for you. He would never want you to put up with this stuff. He just wouldn't. I mean, you are precious to him. And he tells us not to put your pearls before swine. So sometimes you have to grow out of that and realize, wait a minute, you know, I am so much more valuable. Why am I putting up with this? And if someone can't value you and appreciate you, um, there's no reason to hang around with them, you know? So um, there's a balance. There's a balance between putting your foot down and there's a balance between saying, you know, I'm trying to minister to them and share the gospel with them and I'm hoping that they get saved. So there is that type of ministry mindset that you have toward difficult people that you truly hope that they get saved because you don't want to see them go to hell. But when they continue to make up things about you and, you know, tell the whole town of Epsom where I'm from stuff about you that's not true, you know, there's just got to be a line. There's got to be a line of, you know, some kind of accountability, some kind of, you know, I, you know, apology, some kind of, um, you know, safety net for your own emotional health. 
So I'm actually happy that I, my husband and I are now divorcing. I mean, it is a sad thing. It's never meant to be. It's meant to be for life. One man, one woman for life. But when someone's treating you, you know, they push you, they can't, they can't have that intimacy with you. They want to, you know, put you through the ringer. They want to just destroy you. They can't, you know, stick up for themselves and you with their family. They let your family walk all over you. That's not the kind of marriage you want. So um, Jesus talked about those who have the outside of the cup clean, but on the inside, it's all dirty. Um, and he talks about how you should clean the inside of the cup so that the outside too is also clean. And he also talks about those who um, are like, all they look all good on the outside but on the inside they're full of dead man's bones these are people who want to look good they're hypocritical they want to look good to the community they act fake nice they act all sweet but you know their heart is as ugly as can be so um yeah ladies don't put up with this stuff don't and i watch a lot of stuff about um you know what to expect from men how they should treat you Get a gentleman, get a man who knows how to treat you well. Don't put up with that.